All right, this starts off just the same as any quadratic formula problem. I notice there's already a zero here. This number is already positive, so I am ready to go. This is in standard form. Okay, and my formula, of course, is opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So when I plug in, okay, and the key is the, the new thing is going to come at the end here. So nothing new is happening right now. You can kind of just relax and coast on what you already know about the quadratic formula. Okay, and this is negative 12 plus or minus. On the bottom, I have a 2. And let's simplify this. 12 squared is 144. And then negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4 times negative 8. This is plus 32. Okay, now 144 plus 32 is 176. Okay, now this is where things get a little bit different. So if I put square root of 176, it's just a decimal. So what we've done in the past is just put box it, I'm done. However, there actually is another option um, that's more important in Algebra 2, but um, it comes up in some of the more accelerated geometry classes. I'm going to take this number and I'm going to simplify it the same way that I did up here. Okay, now 176, I can just look at it, I see it's even, so it's divisible by 2. Okay, so I'm going to start like this. That's prime. I see 88, that's 8 and 11. 11 is prime. This is 4 and 2, and this is 2 and 2. So when I simplify 176, this becomes, right, there's 4 2s and an 11. So this becomes a double, a double, so that becomes 2 times 2 on the outside. So this becomes 4 root 11, okay? So this 176 is the same as 4 root 11. Now, there's one more step. Here's why. Take a look. This is a fraction, okay? I can simplify this fraction, right? Because negative 12 divides by 2, and 4 divides by 2 as well. So I can actually simplify this. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. 4 divided by 2 is 2, okay? Now notice this root 11 does not does not simplify. You can treat this almost like a variable, like an x, right? Like just the way that we don't touch a variable because we don't know what the value is, we don't touch an irrational number because it's like a crazy value. So this is almost like negative 12 plus 4x, right? And I'm just dividing by 2. So this is your answer. And remember, again, this is two answers. This is negative 6 plus 2 root 11 and negative 6 minus 2 root 11. Okay? So uh, notice that simplifying this radical allowed me to simplify the answer a little bit more. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. This one comes out just a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to add 2n squared to both sides first because it's not in standard form, right? That has to be a 0. And now I'm going to go ahead and do my regular quadratic formula. Okay, so that's opposite of b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4 times a times c over 2a. All right, let's keep going. Okay, this is 16. And then I'm just going to use a calculator for this one. Feeling a little lazy. Negative 4 times 9 times negative 16. I get 576. And I'm going to add that to 16. Oh, that is not what I meant to do. 576 plus 16 is 592. Okay, now I'm going to take this again. I'm going to simplify. Once again, I notice it's, pro it's even. Like, I pretty much always just, like, I have a, if I have a big number, I'm like, oh, is it even? Let me just divide it by 2, make my life a little easier. And this number is even, too. I'm going to go ahead and divide it by 2. And I'm just typing this. I'm just typing divided by 2 in my calculator, right? And then I get to 143. Ooh. Number that divides into 143. Let's see. Not 2. Look, and I'm just typing in, like, 143 divided by 3. No, 143 divided by 4. No, it's not going to be 4 because it's all divisible by 2. Not 5. Not 6. Let's see about 7. No. No. Ooh, 
Oh, look, I got one. Okay. Look, 11 and 13. I have a feeling it's not going to matter, right? Because look, I didn't get any more doubles. So see how I w did all that work to figure out this was 11 and 13? Eh, doesn't matter. Look, my double twos, right? This becomes this. This is 2 times 2 times 11 times 13. This becomes a double, so that goes to the outside. This 11 times 13 stays on the inside anyway, and I just end up with this, okay? So now, watch what happens here, because it's slightly different than the first problem. Okay, notice I wasn't able to simplify this as far. And I can still simplify this, okay? Because what I notice, look, it's these three pieces that I'm looking to simplify, right? This is, remember I'm treating this like just like an x, okay? But if I look at this, I can say, can I simplify that fraction? Like, can I simplify 4 over 18? Yeah, they're both divisible by 2. And I say, okay, well, is this one divisible by 2 also? Oh, hey, it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through and just divide by 2 in everything. So I'm dividing the bottom by 2, I get 9. I'm dividing this by 2, I get negative 2. I'm dividing this by 2, right? 2 divided by 2 is just 1, and I just write it like this. Okay, so you can see it ends up looking a little bit different than my first answer. This one stayed a fraction. Right here, the bottom of my fraction was 2, so when I divided everything by 2, like, it literally just became not a fraction. Whereas here, I did, I was able to kind of do the same thing, which is simplify everything by dividing by 2, um, but I still had something on the bottom of my fraction, so it stayed a fraction. Okay, but take a look at those two, and then you're going to flip and try these four questions on the back. And they're all like this, where you do your regular quadratic formula, and then at the end, you have some simplifying to do.